Hey guys, Hamster Wheel here with a new video, and today I want to talk with you guys about some underrated items in Classic WoW. Now when I mean underrated, I'm talking about items that aren't that well known and where people often don't realize just how useful they can be in certain situations. Things like the Skull of Impending Doom and Tidal Charm are items that I've seen in PvP and have been brought up so many times that those will not be talked about. Now with the help of the viewers, I found items that are fairly unknown or are well known, but not a whole lot of people see the potential of said item. So, without further ado, let's start off this list with the Mark of the Dragonlord, recommended by Bob Plays Games. An item most people never paid any real attention to, and an item that is going to wow a lot of people. So what this ring does is give you a shield that absorbs 500 damage. But, while that shield is active, you gain 22 mana every 5 seconds, and here's the kicker, for 30 minutes. That's right, if you manage to take less than 500 damage in those 30 minutes, you will have that extra MP5 bonus for its entire duration. And 22 MP5 in vanilla is huge. That's the equivalent of two mind tap talismans, a very popular combo for let's say resto shamans. The only problem with this item is that it drops off of Overlord Wyrmthaluk in Lower Blackrock Spire, which isn't as popular a dungeon as let's say Upper Blackrock Spire, and on top of that, it has a very low drop chance. But should you be a healer or a class that relies heavily on MP5 and should this item drop, you better try and get it because the shield is very powerful. Next item I want to talk about is the Ravager that drops off of Herod in Scarlet Monastery Armory, recommended by Promos. Now, the Ravager on paper doesn't seem like that great of an item. It has no stats and the prop makes you blade storm while standing still in one place. So if you want to move, you have to manually cancel the effects. However, some people have found some very unique purposes for this item, including Razia, who has shown that with the right playstyle, you can actually become a pretty decent AoE hunter with that axe, being able to farm mobs from lower level dungeons, and on top of that, every hit that the Ravager does has a chance to proc Wind Fury. So there is a way where you could be mowing down packs of mobs as a shaman while getting Wind Fury procs for days. That's why I consider this item to be very underrated. Up next is the Silent Fang, recommended by Bob Plays Games. A blue sword that drops off of Dark Master Gandling in Skullamance with a 1.6 attack speed. On paper not the greatest, but that chance on hit. Oh boy. A silence that lasts a whopping 6 seconds can make or break a fight if you're let's say a warrior or a rogue trying to bring down a caster. You'll still have to be lucky as it's only a chance on hit and not a use, but at the right moment at the right time, this can be an absolute deal breaker and a very nifty item for someone who wants an extra weapon in their arsenal. That and the fact that this is a weapon means you can swap it out during combat for some added flexibility. Then we move on to the Annihilator, recommended by Mike Bollman. Hope I'm pronouncing your name that correctly. An item crafted by a blacksmith. This is an item that I've barely ever seen on private servers and it's a shame because this is probably one of the best main handers to have for a tank that is currently off tanking a boss, being able to not just be a standby for the main tank, but as an added bonus, add 3 stacks of 200 reduced armor on the boss. Now as we know, rogues and well geared fury warriors can do a lot of damage, and 600 reduced armor on a boss can definitely give their DPS a bump, and perhaps even make or break a fight. All that is possible with the Annihilator, and while the price for all the mats is admittedly quite steep, it is still an underrated item if you ask me. Next item I want to talk about is the Crescent Staff, an item that you get from a quest called Leaders of the Fang. Now I know what you're probably thinking, underrated? This? It's one of the most common blues you would get as a caster. Well yeah, you're right, for a caster. However, this item is also great for warriors. Wait what? But it has intellect and spirit? Well yes, but let me explain. You see in the early stages of leveling a warrior on the horde side, you don't exactly get any really good two-handed weapons. Sure, you can go to the auction house or hope for a really good random world drop, but what if you can't rely on either of those two situations? Well, then look no further, warriors. This is your go-to weapon in your late teens and early 20s, because while the stats are kinda terrible, the damage is really good. Trust me, I've tried this out on my own server, and even with crappy gear, I was able to mow down mobs at a very respectable pace. I know that wearing a staff as a warrior is kind of weird. 
But things like sword or axe specialization are talents that come into play much later when you're past level 30. So yeah, get this as a warrior if you're going to level up as a two-handed fury warrior or something. You're gonna love it. Up next is the green whelp armor, also recommended by Mike Bowman and crafted by a leather worker. This item is absolutely wonderful if you're leveling in a zone where there's a lot of PvP going on, like Stranglethorn Vale, because every melee attack has a 5% chance to put the target to sleep for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is enough for a melee to bandage up, or for a druid to heal up, gain distance and root the enemy, so this can be a deal breaker and completely ruin an opener for, let's say a rogue who's trying to gank you with cheap shot then kidney shot. If he gets put to sleep, his combo is ruined and you have a good chance to counter him. Also, it's not that expensive to create, so when I'm leveling my Orc Hunter on Classic, you can rest assured knowing that I will have this ready to go if I'm going to a hotbed for gankers. Up next is the Warmonger, recommended by Metagoblin and it's a world drop. So this item has a warrior slash paladin feel to it. It's a sword with a 3.0 attack speed, which is not the best, 3 strength and 3% hit which makes this item great for hunters in early endgame. Wait, hunters? Oh yeah, despite this thing having that 3 strength on it, it's still an amazing item for hunters who are going to raid and need to stock up on extra hit chance, because the 3% hit alone makes this item worth getting if you can get it off the auction house for a decent price. I know it might look a little weird, but I've seen hunter after hunter wear this as their very first raiding weapon, so to say, because there are very little weapons in the game that offer you this much extra hit chance. And as we all know, hit chance is the first stat you should focus on if you're a DPS and want to start raiding. Next item I want to feature in this video is the horned viking helmet that drops off of Eric the Swift in Older Man, and it was recommended by Livebro. It's a level 40 plate item with agility and stamina, but more importantly, it does exactly the same thing that the Goblin Rocket Helmet does, though this has a 30 minute cooldown compared to the Rocket Helmet's 20 minutes. But still, a non-engineering item that makes the target incapacitated for 30 seconds? That's a dream item for anyone who's heavy on the PvP and has big enough balls to take on a 2v1, so it's another item definitely worth keeping in the back of your head should you want to have some extra utility in your PvP activities. Up next is the Black Duskwood Staff, a staff with no caster stats and a chance on hit for melees. Yeah, this staff has always been an odd duckling, and because of those stats, no one really saw any value in it, and thus it always ended up on the auction house for next to no money. However, as I've just explained with the Crescent Staff, wearing a staff as a melee DPS isn't necessarily a really bad thing, and the same goes for this item. Now this is a level 33 item, so any warrior should have their whirlwind axe by now and have something like axe or sword specialization depending on the item. However, for enhancement shamans, this item isn't half bad. It has a fast attack speed and no real stats, but because you can pick these up for dirt cheap and because the DPS is still not too shabby, you can actually do a fair amount of damage with this thing and use this for leveling and even some PvP. Sure, you might look a little funny as an enhancement shaman wearing a staff, but you'll have the last laugh when you mow someone down with a wind fury crit using this item. Now it's time to talk about the Phantom Blade recommended by Fishfood159. A very cool looking item, but also a very handy chance on hit, because it decreases the armor of the target by 100 for 20 seconds, but more importantly, they cannot stealth or turn invisible during these 20 seconds which makes this a great counter weapon for when you're fighting a rogue who mid-fight wants to vanish and open up on you again, cause now they can't anymore. That and it has a decent 2.6 attack speed and the damage itself is pretty good too. The only problem is that it's rather expensive to make, but despite that I'd say it's still a pretty underrated item because of that chance on hit. Time to talk about something a little different. The Crystal of Zin Malor, recommended by Moonsty. This item is part of an alliance quest, and if you never handed that quest, you can have this item for as long as you'd please. So what does it do? Well, as you can see, it deals damage and drains 100 to 501 mana every second if you are not worthy. It also takes away health, so equipping this will make you kill yourself. But wait, how on earth is that useful? Well, here's the thing. If you die by this item, and not by, let's say, a raid boss because your raid is wiping, you get no durability loss. 
and no durability loss means no repair bill, which in the end will save you lots of money if you have this with you for a raid. So that's why, in my humble opinion, this item is underrated. It's a great way to kill yourself without suffering any durability loss. Next item is an item you don't wear, but a separate usable item. The Clutch of Foresight, recommended by Fishfood159. This item drops off of Maleki the Pallet in Stratholm. What this does is basically the same thing as a mage's counterspell. It counters the enemy spell cast, preventing any spell from that school of magic being cast for 10 seconds. That and it also generates a high amount of threat. Unfortunately when you use the item it's gone and you can only carry one at a time. But despite this I'd still say it's a pretty sick item to hold on to if you're running Stratholm and this drops. Imagine being a mage, having this in your bag, fighting another player that wants to kill you and right after he thinks you use your counterspell, you pull this out and catch him by surprise with a double counterspell. That and because it generates a high amount of threat, you could also hold on to this if you're a tank and looking for some extra threat on a particular target. All in all, not a mind-blowing item, but something that can definitely throw people off if you use this in PvP. Up next is the Jagged Obsidian Shield, which on its own is a half decent item, but that 3 second silence is definitely not something to ignore. Elemental Shamans are probably the ones that can benefit the most from this, as they always prefer to roll around with a main hand and a shield, and since they can decimate their opponent in just a few seconds with the amount of burst damage they can do, a small window of 3 seconds where the other target is silenced could be enough to make or break a fight, especially cause a Chain Lightning plus Earthshock combo takes only 1.5 seconds to cast and with a little luck can deal well over 2000 damage. Next item I want to talk about is the Shatterer, recommended by AJ9Lives and is an item crafted by blacksmiths. It has a chance on hit to disarm the target for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a huge time window, so let's say you're battling a warrior with a big two-hander, he can now do next to no damage in a 10 second time window, which again, can be a huge opportunity for you to turn the fight and come out victorious. And because it's a weapon, you can once again swap this out during combat, so you can react instantly when getting charged by a warrior and try to turn the tide with this item. And then we get to the Windweaver Staff. A staff with stamina, intellect and arcane damage. So on paper, this doesn't look like a great staff. Warlocks and priests don't rely on arcane damage and mages don't use arcane missiles that often. So what's the purpose of the staff? Well, balance druids. If you're one of those druids that wants to actually try and level as a balanced druid, here's your staff. This thing is amazing for its level and with a few well selected items means you can deal nasty Starfire crits at an early level and completely catch people by surprise. It is a random world drop so you do have to hope that either you get it yourself or that it's on the auction house for a decent price. Then we have Mira Song recommended by Bob Plays Games which you can get through a quest chain that involves you going to Skullamance. So what's so great about this item? It doesn't have some weird chance on hit. The stats aren't anything to write home about. Why is this here? Well, first off, this item is fairly unknown to the general classic public. Throughout my years and years of playing on retail vanilla and vanilla private servers, I've barely ever seen any rogue with this, and while I admit that there might be better offhanders out there, this one is still worth considering. First up, it's a sword, not a dagger. So if you're going combat sword spec, that means two weapons that can benefit from sword specialization. Next, it has a pretty fast attack speed, great for applying poisons to the target. So while this doesn't do anything super special, it's still a solid weapon that not a whole lot of people know of, which makes this item pretty underrated if you ask me. Next item is Serenity, recommended by Bob Plays Games. Yeah, I know, the guy was on fire with the recommendations. Anyway, this is another item with a pretty nifty chance on hit. It dispels a magic effect on the current foe. Now against some classes, this might not do a whole lot. Like, maybe take away a druid's mark of the wild buff. However, it can be quite nasty against the paladin who just popped their blessing of protection or hand of freedom, and then this item takes it away. It is quite situational, but in a situation like that, it can really turn a 1v1 into your favor, and for that reason, I decided to put this on the list. Next item I want to talk about isn't really an item, it's a whole set, which is the Ironweave set, recommended by Gordon Tsang. Now at first glance, this set seems terrible for casters. They have no spell damage, 
no spell hit, crit, or whatever. What they do have, however, is a lot of armor. On a Warlock with a simple scroll of protection and a Mark of the Wild buff, I managed to get somewhere around 35-40% to 40 damage reduction. You get 10% chance to resist silence and interrupt effects, which combined with Soul Link means you're probably going to be able to take a huge beating and completely throw off a warrior, as he's probably thinking, why the hell am I hitting this clothy for so little? This doesn't make any sense. Of course for this to really have a huge effect, you're going to have to get at least the majority of the set, which can take a lot of time. But it's definitely something to keep in the back of your head when running dungeons and in some situations can help you out a lot. Like fighting a rogue thinking he can take away a huge chunk of your health with his initial stun lock. And because of that I decided to throw this onto the list as well. Next item on this list is the Demon Slayer. Another item that usually ends up on the auction house pretty cheap. Mainly because it only has increased attack power against demons. However... To a hunter, this item could be very useful for when you're fighting demons or your guild goes out to, let's say, kill Lord Kazak. I mean, think about it. 99 extra attack power is more than some really good epics give like Ashkandi. And considering how this is a level 52 blue item that isn't all that expensive to get, I'd say for the right situations, this is a very nifty and underrated item. And the last item I want to talk about is the Wildthorn Mail, an item crafted by blacksmiths. Now in my years of playing vanilla on Breedsill and my years of playing on vanilla private servers, I have barely ever seen someone craft this, let alone wear this, mainly because it is admittedly rather expensive to make. But the stats are pretty insane for elemental shamans. I mean think about it, is there any other chest out there that offers you that much spell damage at such an early level? Hell, even the Zandalar shaman chest, the go-to chest for elemental shamans which you get much later down the line, has the same amount of spell damage. I mean sure that's spell damage and this is nature damage, but since elemental shamans rely mostly on nature damage, that particular difference is pretty small. And the cool thing is, if you combine this with the elven spirit clause, a leather BOE item that usually isn't too expensive off the auction house, you will have a whopping 55 bonus nature damage from just two items that you could have before even reaching level 50. So while this item is expensive to make, I'd say it's definitely still worth it, and because it's fairly unknown, I'd say that this is definitely an underrated item. And there you go guys, 20 items that I feel are underrated in Classic WoW. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back very soon, but until then, I'm Hamsterwheel, and have a good one.